there are a lot of people out there now who think still and that, that something can be achieved in minutes you know oh we can just get a, a, a right. visual done in minutes in mid journey uh, and yeah sometimes you can that really to kind of get the finish and the craft that you see out there on on people's feeds takes time everybody, this is Brian Sykes. Uh, we're a part of AI Explore, the AI Creators Collective. This is a brand new podcast that we're launching on the heels of the AI Explore uh, Collaborations book series. And who I've got the, the pleasure of having as a guest today is one of the contributors to our very first book. Uh, this is Matt Garbutt. And uh, Matt, a pleasure to have you here, sir. I'm uh, looking forward to chatting and getting to know you a little bit better. Uh, let's start with what I got from LinkedIn is it tells us that you're a creative director at Brave Bison. Um, and I love the little tag underneath using AI to augment creativity and get faster results for clients and brands, Web3 and Crypto Enjoyer. Uh, so, Matt, tell us a little bit about your place uh, with Brave Bison, and then we're going to jump into the AI stuff. Sure. OK, so uh, the agency is is a digital agency. It's got a, a heavy kind of focus on on social and performance marketing or digital uh and it has a media network as well so uh, kind of a, a, a modern agency not a not a normal or let's say traditional agency yeah um i run the creative team in the agency and in in that team we have uh, thinkers we have designers we have uh, writers, we have strategists, etc. And, and um, so, yeah, our our work is generally concerned with uh, brands and brand communications on digital. Yeah. Um, and of course, in in the creative industry in general, there's there's a huge impact that AI is having at the moment. So, and a lot of people are kind of scrambling to to keep up or or or. I suppose, I suppose stay ahead as well or, or even be on the curve, you know? Right. So, yeah. yeah. So this is just kind of an interesting segue. Like, how did you first come across AI? What was the thing that kind of grabbed you? Uh, and then what was your initial exploration like? Um, well, I mean, it, it, at, at work, AI has, has kind of been a constant um, thread and theme for, for quite a few years now, to be honest with you. But, but that's it's more been in the in the, the kind of the worlds of seo because the agency's got right. a kind of a rich heritage in seo and then in paid media as well because of course um that the guys over in paid media are using a lot of, of machine learning based tools and and then um for reporting and all of that sort of stuff as well for you know audience modeling and attribution modeling etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah um but of course there's been there was a lot of talk for a lot of time that when it came to the creative side of the operation, that AI would um, not affect it that hard or deeply. And if it did, it wouldn't affect it for a long time. And then, yeah. um, then 2022 happened. <laughs> um, right. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so chat GPT kind of, kind of um, bust out uh, uh, almost overnight at us and, and, and slapped us, slapped us around. And then, um mid journey release version four which was kind of leaps and bounds better but but I, yeah. you know through through last summer i guess i was kind of becoming more familiar with the tools but not really using them in any kind of deep way and then it was kind of the, the latter part of last year where i right. i i kind of ended up digging myself a very deep ai shaped rabbit hole and i'm still in it and deep, deep uh, yeah. every day that's very yeah. familiar <laughs> it was you know, I remember the first time I saw AI art, uh, I think it was that little 64 pixel square image. And mm. 
you know, this is what AI is doing. And I'm like, you can barely even see this thing. There's, you know, it'll be years before we've got anything of significance to look at. Um, you know, and it was literally less than a year later, they're putting out, uh, pictures and I was just blown away. Um, you know, and I started playing with Dolly and stable diffusion and my actual, the first venture into the AI art space was with Google collabs, disco diffusion. Um, that should have persuaded me not to jump in, uh, just because of all the hurdles to actually make it render something initially. Uh, but right. it's been really neat yeah. to watch this progress. And then I kind of went backwards and I started looking at all the other AI technology with the chat GPT, uh, the stuff that was available on all the platforms and realized this thing's been around for a while. Uh, so it was really interesting yeah. to kind of engage and then play catch up uh, with regards to the branding and the, the marketing and the elements that it could be an asset to. Um, yeah. Can you walk us through your creative process when using text art tools uh, like Midjourney, Dolly, Stable Diffusion, and, and which of those is your preferred? Uh, definitely Midjourney. Uh, yeah. I've tried. Uh, I, I I started with Dolly, and uh, yeah, it was okay. Um, it was it was, right. it was a nice little experiment, but but you know it has kind of, kind of pretty severe limitations in in terms of its pricing model. Right. And the fact that you can't uh, you can't version things like you can in Mid Journey, and right. you can't it's it, it's just you know it's kind of a one shot deal. And so I, I struggled with it a little bit in that respect. I, I've tried Stable Diffusion a bit as well, but I, I don't know. I, I guess MJ is just kind of where I'm most comfortable. Um, Certainly, where I, I naturally find myself having the most experience, and largely that's because of its kind of relative ease of use to me, at least because I, I'm been on discord for years right. and um it gets the best results frankly Certainly. and, and it, it seems the most kind of flexible malleable um and 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 yeah the best that you get the best results out of it as a tool yeah so is there a certain way or a process or creative process that you use when you're working with midjourney it uh it really depends on on what i'm trying to do but interestingly um well, I say it might be interesting or not. I don't know. <laughs> it's interesting to me, at least. I, I'm, I'm, I, my approach to begin with, and and I suppose a, a running theme of it still is, how can I, in my professional capacity, use this tooling to um, either make my work better, more prolific, uh, or right. more interesting, or or you know, um, kind of use it as a creative partner to get get me further ahead more quickly. And, yep. and you know so you know all, all sorts of things like that um and so i've been using it quite a lot at work uh to i mean and i'm talking about chat gpt as well here to sure um help drill for oil in terms of ideas for campaigns or for um for headlines or for ad lines etc um and then port those ideas over to uh, mid journey to kind of come up with visuals to to use against those ads so that's that's one process that i'm using it for and and if you if you think that a lot of the work that we do as an agency is in paid social uh and in uh like content campaigning right. um with a kind of an seo focus then then you know it's fairly easy to imagine that that's the kind of visual content that we need on a on a on a given daily basis so so that's kind of first portal call but then um it's it, it's it's such a labyrinth that you very quickly find yourself going off and having all sorts of fun in other directions as well so Certainly. so anything Certainly. you can think of <laughs> any 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 picture that you've got you've got in your head you can now you can now um realize into pixels which was uh we couldn't do before and and oh, an, sure. i suppose another thing so so yeah so so obviously I, I find myself going in in all sorts of different directions not as many as other people out there who who blow my mind on a daily basis in, in the community <laughs> but um yeah it's 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 very interesting in in that respect to use it as a kind of a concepting tool i like the concepting tool idea and this is you know one of the the big pushes i've tried to have and since i've decided to began learning this and then turning around and teaching those who are coming behind was I wanted to show them what was possible with it and how it could be an asset 
to your industry, wherever you're coming from and how, if you're a creative director or you're a photographer, or if you're an architect or interior designer or a clothing designer, uh, you do videography, all of those fields that you can come into mid journey from, or any of the AI platforms, your tool set is the knowledge that you have. And then learning how to creatively communicate in that space, you open up the door to do amazing things. And you've got the power of the knowledge of, and experience uh, to to be able to express properly a way that Mid Journey goes. Oh, that's what you're looking for. I can do that because you know it's a language based system, and you know there's so much concern uh, being expressed on a daily basis that AI and and the technology that's there is going to be taking away people's jobs, but I think it enhances the existing jobs if you can leverage it as a tool in those spaces. You know, I see. Uh, there's only so many hours in a day. And if I had to generate these as paintings, you know, I might get two, three paintings done in a day. If I'm doing physical work as a commercial artist, uh, if I'm developing brand ideas, you know, I can come up with thumbnails all day. Uh, but the iteration, the quality of the, of the iteration that you can get from mid journey is such a leap forward, uh, that the thumbnails now are no longer just little scratches on a piece of paper that I'm trying to say, no, this is what it's supposed to look like. Um, I'm actually yeah. getting fleshed out concepts uh, that really moves you so much further down the road. Uh, so it's sort of like Photoshop was for me 20, 30 years ago when it first started and to be able to jump into that place and then learn and leverage it as a tool instead of literally taking photographs, drawing, hand comping and laying things out like the class and the people who preceded me uh, in the creative field. Um, yeah. Second question in this space is then how do you see text art technology evolving in the future? Uh, and what role do you see yourself playing in that evolution? Uh, that's a really good question. I mean, it, it, it's, I don't know if this is just a moment in time that we're in right now with this kind of explosion that's going on. And I'm, I'm right. sure you're the same, you know, you get, you get on your feed every morning and there's, you know, three, five new tools that you've never heard of that just right. blow your mind. The, what, the, I saw one the other day, um, which was a, a video to video tool, which uh, allowed you to skin any existing video with yeah. any finish that you wanted. And, and it did more, it did in painting, it did green screen, it, it does all sorts of stuff. Um, and it wasn't even a month ago that I think I wrote a predictions post, which got turned into a blog on our company site as well, which yeah, I remember um, that. one of the predictions was we're going to see video AI kind of get a lot better this year. Right. And I didn't expect to be where we are now with video <laughs> a Agreed. month ago. <laughs> right. right. Um, <laughs> so, so that's one thing. So, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that this, this, uh, this development curve, and I think I read this somewhere the other day, I don't know if this is the right number, so I'm paraphrasing here, but it was something like the exponential development curve that we're on with the AI tooling in, 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 you know, in text to art, if you like, and those allied spaces and well, everything right. is something like two times the normal exponential growth rate that you would ordinarily see. Right. Um, uh, so, so yeah, the, the development is, is happening so fast. It's, it's very difficult to keep up. I think it's going to continue, continue to blow our minds on a daily basis. And to be honest right. with you, I am just trying to keep up with it. That's same. Uh, I don't know if you find yourself in the same boat. <laughs> I do. I do. Well, it's yeah. actually almost intimidating, but I have to step back and say, I think the same thing's going to happen. Like what happened with, uh, the Adobe product, uh, suites, because when Adobe first came out, you had, a, you know, there was Adobe Illustrator. You had all this freehand. You had Corel Draw. You know, you have all these different platforms. And actually, I preferred freehand at the time. Um, I thought there were some interesting features that it had. But Adobe bought Aldis, uh, brought that on in board because it had Photoshop, and there was a few other tools. Uh, but anyway, what happens though is there's a, a trickulation of products where the best kind of picks the lead. Uh, the one that does the thing the best, sort of like mid journey right now. Yeah. Uh, there's it's some easy, prominence yeah. in Survival how of the fittest, doing. you know? Yeah. yeah. And Darwinism. so yeah. I think that same thing's going to happen in regards to all the, the proliferation of things that are available. Yeah. It'll have a handful of people that'll grab onto some of the, the lesser quality things, uh, and they'll swear by them and think they're the greatest, but I think we're going to start seeing this 
large proliferation began to pare down and you'll find, you know, a, a more succinct approach. Um, you know, there's the app mindset where our phones now you can get a, you know, an app for everything. But what's happening is a lot of those apps are becoming narrowed and one app can do multiple things. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll begin to see how this actually works. I like the idea right now of Photoshop being a photo editing tool and Illustrator being a vector-based editing tool and Premiere being my video tool and After Effects being my, you know, it allows me to segment and then process how I want to put things together. When you start joining all that together, it ends up, being a lesser than tool typically. Uh, so I think we're going to start seeing some really refined segmentation and how the, the tool sets work and will be used. Um, that's kind of my thinking. And, and then, to, to, yeah, I, I, I agree. Uh, it, 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 it is very much an evolution thing and a Darwinism thing. And, and um, it will, I, I think that the tooling will, it will be a, a kind of a feedback loop of, of, yeah its users and the developers in conversation and concert with each other to um, to bring it forward. But then I suppose to answer the second part of your question, like what role do you um, yeah. see the likes of us playing in, in all of this? I, I, I still, even a month on from, from those early year predictions, I still do think that uh, prompt engineers are, or prompt designers, call them what you will, basically people who can use the tooling or machine right. whisperers, a number of different names for them. Um, I think those people are going to be more in demand as time progresses. And I agree. I, I don't know. I guess, I guess we'll see in terms of the development and the, you know, the, this Darwinism I keep talking about, but um, whether the tools become more feature rich and therefore a bit more complex. Right. And therefore the people who were on the curve to begin with are, you know, a few steps ahead of those who are joining the curve later on when there were, you know, there will, there will be more features to play with, which means that um, there's a steeper growth curve potentially. I don't know. Right. But I do think that we're going to see a demand for prompt engineers, both in, um, you know, in, in large language models and, right. and text models like uh, ChatGPT, uh, et cetera. And for sure, with uh, visual tools, um, be right. it static video or, or all of the above. Yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. I, I mean, it's interesting, even with just taking a look at Mid Journey right now. You know, there's the standard Mid Journey that's available, and it's got all of its backwards mm -hmm. editions of version three and before. Uh, but even with Mid Journey currently, there's the Niji model, which allows you to do more of an anime style. I can't help but wonder, will they continue doing this segmentation even within the platforms? And so they right. become more specialized based off of the need or the approach that you're coming from. Um, mm -hmm. Great answers on there. I think that's some good stuff. So what challenges have you faced when working with the tool set currently and how have you overcome them? Um, I think, well, initially I, 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 I first picked up the tools and um, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> right. <laughs> How do you write a prompt? What's, you know, um, what do I even make a picture of? <laughs> right. Um, uh, it, it, yeah. So, so I suppose it, it, it actually neatly harks back to the last point that we were talking about, which was that um, in order to understand this, you have to understand how the machine works, what, what data sets you need to call on, how you need to construct and um, refine a prompt to get whatever the picture in your head was in right. pixels. For the most part, and, and because I spent most of my time and still do in, in mid journey, that was the initial challenge. And it was a steep curve for, ah, I mean, a, a while actually, I mean, it's, I'm, you know, we're all still on the curve, I'm sure, but actually it was, it was some of your lessons that, that really helped me along in oh, the early you. days. So I've got you to thank awesome. for that. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so putting a prompt together, I think was, was, um, perhaps the, the biggest challenge in them all. Certainly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's funny because I just taught a class at the local college. And it was an intro class to AI in general. And so it was a deep dive, two hour session 
where I expose them to chat GPT. I walk them through some of the image to te or text to image based uh, platforms, uh, show them how they can combine the two and then let them loose and let them play. And it's funny because you come to that spot where, okay, I've taught you some basics. Now, what do you want to create? And everybody goes blank because it's sort of like, yeah. um, you know, I've got multiple children yeah. and I remember that mindset of when you give somebody too big of a choice, they don't know what mm. to make, what to do. Yeah. And this is part yeah. of the process of why I'm going through piece by piece and teaching on individual topics. You know, let's talk about paper craft. And so I've spent the past right. uh, yeah. week, you know, just looking at different types of paper craft. And the reason is because it's yeah. from those iterations, you begin to say, oh, hey, I've got an idea of how this can be used. I get a, a text every single day where somebody's like, hey, I could use that for this project I'm working on over here. Um, you know, so it's, mm. It's almost a trigger point where people then it's narrowing it down. You see an example example of something that works and people are able to go, oh, I, I know how this can be useful. Uh, so I think that's kind of the fun thing in this creative space is we have to begin narrowing it down and say, you know, constraints are actually what help us um, in the creative space. It's, that's what opens the door. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and it allows you to explore something. Well, I think you've just said it much more deeply to get to get more refinement in the output as well over a period of time. But I, I think another thing I've noticed is that um, on, uh, I think that, I don't know if, if LinkedIn is the place that you spend most of your time, but it, yeah. it's, it's definitely the network where I spend most of my time. But but I find that, <laughs> and I think, you know, you, you're you're responsible for some of this, is that <laughs> we kind of go through through week on week trends as well. So yeah. so I've, I've seen, since you've been doing a lot of paper stuff, I've seen a lot of other people doing <laughs> a lot of other paper yes. stuff. And there was, there was kind of, we had sort of almost like flat illustration week the other week as yes. well, you know? So I, I think that happens too. Yeah. I've noticed that I can people affect the trend. each other. <laughs> it's awesome. <Yeah. laughs> so in the art creation space, yeah. has there been something that you've done that you've enjoyed the most, or that's kind of been your mm. favorite, um, in the, the text art? Uh, whew, yeah, quite a lot of things. Um, there was, I, I could share my screen, actually. I put a little mirror board together. Would that, would that work? Yeah, that'd be or, great. Okay. Uh, let's see if I could do that. Oh, wait. Ah, there we go. So, actually, I, I was putting this together yesterday so nice I, we can start at the top i mean i'll just go through real quick sure um these these ones across the top here i don't know if you might you might even remember them brian actually because there's a few there was yeah. something around christmas time there was you, you put up um a, a little uh prompt hack to get the no. travel poster right without words <laughs> Yeah, and it was a. I think it was a paint by number print. Yes, was 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 kind of the the key element of the prompt. Um, and I'd been wanting to do something like this for a while, but anyway, yeah. So using your, I think it was a national parks thing that you you did. Using that, you know, that that kind of kernel of that prompt, right? Um, made a bunch of travel posters for for each of the um, each of the planets, which was just so much fun spending time doing that over christmas these and, are great and that's that's kind of still one of my one of my most favorite things because just because there was kind of time to explore it without uh right you know being busy at work yes <laughs> and yeah. just having having you know whatever a day or so to just kind of just sit with it and noodle around you know um i love the look of so these. that was good fun and i'll tell you something that i've discovered is when you play that's when you really start discovering things um, mm, you know, when mm. you've got an assigned project, then you're only thinking in relation to, uh, you know, I need A plus B in order to get C. And so that's, you narrow yeah. your focus and that's great for, you know, the accomplishing that specific task. But when you've got an yeah. opportunity of like you've done here, I want to explore creating travel posters for all the plants. Look at the variety that you've created in that space and how you've just kind of opened up all kinds of avenues. I, I love what you've got here. Um, and then I don't know other stuff. Here are some ad sets which were quite good fun. BMW launched a chameleon I remember car. Those. Yeah, did 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 some little, did some playing with that. And then this is going to go in one of our. Um, we, we're going to do. A, we're doing a white paper at the moment as a, as an agency to kind of talk about how we're using AI across the agency. So these are some little ad sets for a a, a, a brand that doesn't exist. 
which is a zero alcohol yeah. brand. Um, so that was quite good fun. Some fashion stuff here. This was awesome fun to do. This is kind of the P-Funk stuff. I think we talked about this on LinkedIn as well. Um, yeah, we did. That, that was good fun. Uh, some model photography. Illustrations. Yeah, yeah these, were, these were good fun. Um, and and just, just kind of fun to play with. The, this was um, prompting off the back of screen print and Saul Bass. And, yeah. and then Mad Men, of course, as well, which is one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Um, yeah, I, I love the designs. So there we go, fun. Uh, what else? Oh, these were some store window concepts, which I was just playing around with the other day, um, just to kind of see if it was possible ag again, and, and just kind of trying to get the uh, the framing right, you know, the, the, the right. square on photo, and then playing with this idea of cali calligraph futurism, I think it's called, which is kind of a new style of calligraphy. Um, so These are yeah, cool. you know, famous brands, store windows, and uh, New Balance is is, a, is an agency client, so I had to do something with New Balance, of course. <laughs> and then another thing which um, has been really interesting lately is 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 and I, I guess I should have talked about it earlier on in terms of you know how we're using uh, the tooling in the agency is for storyboarding, in, yeah. which you know Mid Journey and 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 I know you've done some stuff. Um, uh, some work about that or, or in yeah. that realm a, a few weeks ago as well, which, um, which was great too. Um, but of course now we're in a place where we can dream up a script and put frames together. Sorry, storyboard artists. I feel terrible right. for you, but we can, we can basically do our own storyboards and not just our own storyboards. You know, we can make, um, full phot photographic frames of them. So, this was, I don't know, I'm going to make sure that it, it doesn't play the sound, but this was uh, just a silly idea for a movie or a game, which is was it? kind of inspired by The Last of Us, which I just spent, I don't know, I suppose about a day, all told, um, putting together last weekend. Okay. And, and, and just, a, a, I think the, the point being that and i think as, as we're sort of seeing here there are so many different ways of bringing any idea you might have to life yes um, you don't need a style although it's nice to have one sometimes right. and, and some of the some of the guys out there in the community have you know you look at an image and you know it's from them i, right. I find it hard to stick to a given style <laughs> but right. But I guess the point is, um, with all of this, is that, that, you know, whatever you need to do, you can do it. Um, Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. And I love that when you're looking at the collection of images just in this, you know, kind of a freeze frame almost, mm. how diverse you've, your collection is. And this is the beauty of Mid Journey is, right. you, you know, as an artist, I have kind of a a, a particular style that I go with, you know, if I'm doing something fast and it's going to be pen and ink and I'll do watercolor washes on top. That's just mm. what I did. Mm. Uh, if I've got a little more time, it'll be an acrylic painting or oil painting. It's because that's, you know, that's my skill set. And within that space, there's a look and a feel that's going to be James Montgomery flag or, you know, some of those old classic style artists that I enjoyed as a young artist and was first learning. Mm. Uh, so What's interesting, though, is in this space, I can say, I'd like to see what that might look like as an NC Wyatt, you know, and call on other styles and other artists as a whole uh, and get new, totally new representation, which is fascinating to me. I think um, that's the thing, isn't it, as well? Because <laughs> there was a, a, there's, a, there's an old ad guy in the, in the UK who I, I've got an awful lot of time for and, and is a big influence, a guy called Dave Trott, and he... He puts mm -hmm. these books together with short stories. Sorry, this is this is this is a tangent, but there is a point to it. Um, but one of one of his, I remember one of the things that he's he's talked about is, uh, uh, which talks to that point is, um, if you asked a kid what their favorite foods were, they might say raspberry ripple ice cream and pizza, and right. um, you know those those two foods are, are great by themselves, but but you wouldn't really want to have raspberry ripple ice cream on top of a pizza. <laughs> right. Um, but, but now we're in a space and, and, and I don't know if that rule applies to, to, um, generative art or te text to, to, to image because 
we I think we're finding that that sometimes we get the most interesting results when we mix two completely conflicting references and and throw right. them together. Um, yeah. So we can Agreed. have raspberry ripple ice cream and pizza at the same time, and 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 it looks good and it, and actually tastes quite good sometimes as well. Um, yeah, in, I did the uh, AI art. just kind of as a fun space. Uh, I did the black exploitation with a Star Wars theme. Which right. <laughs> created a totally, you know, it was a really cool image yeah. set. And it's funny because you can blend things that you would never think of seeing together. Uh, yeah. So that, that's really fun. Yeah. Um, so can you talk about any other innovative or unique uses of text art that you've explored outside of this? Has there been any other things that you've kind of jumped in or tried and maybe they didn't turn out so great, but you're like, hey, this is worth giving it a shot? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I suppose one in particular is kind of, architecture and, and interiors um my sister-in-law's an interior designer and um i mean obviously mid-journey and and you know the the the, the visual tooling is has got a clear right. use case there um yeah. but i think it's very specialized there's there are people out there in the community that one guy in particular matteo ferrari yes who I, I think we both know um yeah. who puts together and, and actually some other some other guys there's a guy called sandu something or other I forget his name uh his last name uh, but they put together the most amazing uh, interiors visualizations and i can't get near that uh, but it's, right. it's been fun trying um yeah fashion as well there's some guys out there doing some totally mind-blowing stuff with um with conceptual fashion uh, right. which I also can't get near to, but but I have fun trying and just noodling around with. Um, so I guess, yeah, th maybe those two things in particular um, I've tried and, and probably failed at, but, but have fun failing, yeah. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> the fun thing with this is it's okay. You know, it really mm. gives us a freedom to uh, try things that you would never normally try. Uh, yeah. I'm not a fashion designer by any sense. I've never effectively sewn anything together besides putting a button on a shirt <laughs> but the notion of coming up with a concept and playing with it it's really a lot of fun hmm. uh this is you know, it goes back to the point i made earlier is you know with Teo, he brings in the knowledge as a trained architect yep. and he uses the right. right verbiage in that space which allows him to create these these things and so i think what that means is is you add to your knowledge base we could probably go into those spaces more confidently and be able to deliver the results uh, that these guys are, are bringing to the table because they bring that experience, that knowledge base. Uh, right. So that's kind of one thing I keep trying to point out as, we're, as I'm teaching on each of the lessons is like, here's some of the terms you might need to know uh, that makes this happen. Uh, so that's the fun thing is Mateo is really generous with sharing the props that created the things he was doing, um, which was really cool. Uh, so that's a great point, in, actually. And, and I think, sorry, yeah. uh, just to sort of to kind of double down on it. Um, and, 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 it, and it talks to what we were we were discussing earlier on about, you know, prompt engineers, for one thing, going to be in demand. Yeah. Um, you know, people who know know the tooling, but also the fact that this isn't going to replace people's jobs in the agreed uh, in, in the in the creative industry, because you need that training, that background, and and that sometimes careers worth of experience of all right. of the different reference points and and verbiage and um, yeah nomenclature and and, and language etc. Right. to call on to art direct the machine. Um, yeah. So so it, 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 yeah, expertise is you know in the real world and and the artificial world are still key and, and yeah. yeah which which obviously talks to the yeah the thing about Matteo because he knows what to prompt to get his, yeah. his results I'm literally writing a book uh, right now it's book three for my AI explore series and it's all about uh, photographic prompting and it's funny because I took a class almost 30 years ago two two semesters of uh, uh, photo photography where I learned darkroom and film-based mm -hmm. imaging. Mm -hmm. I don't even have a film-based camera anymore. You know, it's mm -hmm. digitals. Um, and, but the knowledge that is used in that space of 200 and 400 and 800 speed film, you know, your F stops, all of that can be input into mid journey and get a, a look and a feel to an image. It's not 
this is the thing that I, a lot of people misunderstand about mid journey, you know, like, well, I told it to do an F2, whatever, and, and it didn't work. Well, mid journey is not like Photoshop. You don't get to go in and, you know, adjust your color balances and hues. Mm -hmm. You're telling it a reference of use this style. And when you match this style to all the thousands and millions of images that you worked from before that had this style, it has a certain look. Yeah. Reference that when you're creating this image. Um, so this is the kind of thing I'm, I'm trying to engage people around is you're not programming it in the same way you would, you know, um, an Excel spreadsheet or a Photoshop or Illustrator. You're telling it to reference the knowledge base uh, of images that it's working from and how those look based off of the settings that were put into it. Um, yeah. But it's just fascinating because that that knowledge is very applicable because most of the images that it's trained on have, you know, like Flickr, you can go to Flickr.com and look at a photograph and it gives you all the camera settings. Well, that training is embedded inside of Midjourney and all the, the, the AI text art uh, platforms. It is, yeah, um, yeah. So how do you balance the technical aspects of using your AI art uh, with the creative aspects of producing the artwork? That's a good question. And it's, I think it's a, people always say that's a good question when it's a hard question to answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Um, it's a hard question to answer, Brian. Uh, I, I think my best answer to that, and I was thinking about this before we, we, we picked up the line today, was that it's really a, a, a mix that you either need to develop or have of kind of left and right brain. Yeah. And um, I think in, in, the, in our, our world, at present, then I would, uh, I would think and imagine that a lot of us kind of have those skills because it isn't the case that, that a creative just sits there drawing pictures or writes words anymore. They kind of have to pick up the odd spreadsheet or, you know, right. do a bit of admin or, you know, get involved in more kind of, uh, I think it's left brain, but the more kind of the, the more organized and, and analytical and, and whatnot. Yeah. Um, side of things. So, I agree. so I think, yeah, you, 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 it's, it's just kind of finding that balance of left brain and right brain. And, and I think, I suppose that also, it also talks about stumbling blocks and times that we've, um, we've struggled with the, the technology, which was one of the earliest, earlier questions. And yeah. I'm sure we've all had times when we know what we want to get out of the machine, but we just can't get the prompt to work. Yes. And, and, you kind of hit a block and, and I, you know, I, I, I see people out there going, I just want to uh, get this, but it's not happening. I'm prompting with this and other people kind of dive in. And, and sometimes it takes someone coming in from a different like vector or angle of attack to say, Hey, right. have you thought about this? Have you thought about invoking rather than, than, um, you know, being specific about something or, um, what about this reference or that reference or, you know, so, so yeah, I think it, it it just needs balance that probably we all don't have the right balance, but between us, we can get to that balance. Yeah. I like that because your approach really brings in the idea of collaboration with other people in the AI space. And mm. I think that's, what's really cool. And that kind of goes to really the next question. So right. you know, how do you approach collaboration with other AI creators and artists and what have been some of your most memorable collaborative experiences? Um, that's a good one. So, so I, I guess up until now, I've not collaborated too deeply with someone, let's say on a, on an entire project. I know that day will come yeah. and I look forward to it, but yeah. I think, and I, you know, I know, I, well, I, what I mean by that is, um, a visual project. It might be, let's say we were working on a movie and we had to storyboard the entire movie, you know, right. something like that. Yeah. Um, so, so that'll be great fun when that happens. Um, yeah. Or up until now, I think it's been more the kind of thing that we were just talking about there. So asking for help, uh, talking to other people in the space, sharing ideas um, and, and, you know, ways of, of getting the result that you want and, 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 just being open with people. And, and I think that's one of the things about this community is that it is very open source. People are 
Um, yeah. You know, some people obviously, you know, they don't necessarily want to put their full prompt out there in the, in right. the wide world. But um, there was, I mean, an episode actually only yesterday where uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm sure you, you've seen his work. I'm sure we all have. Um, a guy called Ben Roffelson. Um, yeah. He's been doing some absolutely stuff. insane stuff lately. He put up uh, a little story yesterday and, and he puts up like three insanely good stories a day or something ridiculous. But he put up, put up one yesterday where I was like, wow. I mean, that, that was so good. I, and just in the comments in the post, I said, I, I need that prompt in my life, not expecting anything from it. Right. But, but he, he, you know, he, he DM'd me the prompt afterwards and I was like, wow. And it was so simple. And what he got was so amazing that I was expecting a right. much longer prompt. Yeah. Um, I guess, yeah, that's interesting. And then other people have asked me about, you know, in, 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 in out there in the world, what prompt did you use? So, so I think there's a lot of prompt sharing that goes on at the moment and, and I'm, yeah. I'm all for that. If people want me to share it with them, I, I generally will share it with them. I don't often put my full prompts out there in the way that you do, because you're, you're probably the most generous person on the planet <laughs> when, it, <laughs> when it comes to that. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I, but, but the openness of the community lends itself to its collaborative nature. And I think we're all here for each other to, to help each other and, and advance um, this, this field that we've found ourselves in. So yeah, that's what I found. It's amazing. I, that it. no, I love that. I love it. I think what I found most amazing in this space is when I share the prop, not just people are just taking and copy and paste and it's done. They take and they manipulate and they find a way to make it their own. Much mm. like those, those travel posters that you did, those were fantastic. Uh, but it's an exploration. So you've taken amplified. Here's my handful of ideas. And now I've seen at least, uh, at least 30 different renders of totally different designs based off of that poster series that I shared because other people took it, they came up with a whole new thing and they created mm -hmm. things, you know, everything from the star Wars universe to Lego series of posters to what you had, the planets. Uh, it's really fascinating to see how it's sort of like, here's the base and then you can then extrapolate from that and go all over the place with it. Uh, that yeah. to me is what's exciting. And that's, that's kind of like great feedback that what I'm doing is working <laughs> yeah. because it means people now have new tools and, and can do things with it. Mm. Um, so here's a, here's a hard question. Can you discuss any ethical considerations or mm. potential negative impacts of text art technology and how you approach addressing these issues at work? Mm. That is a hard question. I, I, I guess it's more of a concern that I have. Uh, I, I do worry about people in the industry who aren't of the mind to get with the technology. Sorry, that was very stuttered and staccato. I was That's trying fine. to get the words out there in the right order. But I, I do worry about those those guys. Um, I don't want to call them Luddites. I, I think that's 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 derogatory, and it, it would it, it would be unkind to to do that. I, I understand that people have a hard time with this, you know, and I'm talking about artists and illustrators who see their work being sure. sampled and, and aren't okay with it. I think I think we need regulation. I think um, I think the machines need to be trained uh, on on work that people are okay with it being trained on. Agreed. Uh, and and then I, I so so that people's livelihoods are, are kept intact and and are, are safeguarded, um, and and their their kind of um, you know their their secret recipe is is in their hands. Sure. I also worry. I, I mentioned it earlier. I, I worry about um, certain professions like stock photographers like storyboard yeah. artists, um, to a certain extent, illustrators. And then that comes back to my previous point about uh, people either being slow to adopt or not adopting because they see it as too much of a threat. And, right. you know, we've been here before in so many times in history, you know, we talked about Photoshop and, and the Adobe suite earlier on, which, you know, 
that changed designers. the industry. And, and well, yeah, people people were up in arms about that when it first hit, but now it's it clearly, you know, it, 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 all of that tooling is is stock, and 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 if you don't right. know it, then you don't have a job. Agreed. So, I I, I think. I think um, the genie's out the bottle, you know. Pandora's blown the lid off her box, and yeah. we we have to roll with this and ride with it, and and actually, you know, open our arms up to it and 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 work with it because it's not going back in the box. Agreed. And I suppose that's that's kind of my main thoughts on it for now. But I I, I do think. Yeah, again, just to kind of repeat that that people's work and livelihoods need to be safeguarded wherever those people think it needs to be. Right. Yeah. Okay. No, I think I think you're right. It's a very challenging space because you're right. This is it's now out. It's not going to go back in. You're not going to modify that. I mm. think there can be approaches to how it's applied. Um, you know, I suggested a long time ago, just like uh, mid journey has the word blood blocked. I cannot, you know, uh, there's certain words that simply will not go into the system. It's easy mm -hmm. enough for them to do something like that. They could do the same thing with people's names of yep. artists that don't want to be a part of it. I think that should be a, a easy practical solution. Um, so how do you stay inspired and continue to push the boundaries of what's possible, uh, with AI in general? Well, I don't know if I'm pushing the boundaries of what's possible. I think, you know, because I, <laughs> I, how do I stay inspired? How do I push the boundaries of what's possible? I'm going to, I'm going to reference the community again here because yeah, I see so many things, uh, pieces of work on a daily basis that just kind of blow me away Yeah, um, that, that I, I find inspiring and kind of shoot me off in directions which oftentimes are kind of poor copies of of what I've seen because I think again there are so many incredible um, artists, designers, creators right. in the community that that are you know very much at the top of their game that that I, I, I sort of really do feel like I'm trailing in the wake <laughs> a lot of the time and you know I find I, I find quite um, uh, uh, quite formidable. Um, right. So, so those guys inspire me. Um, but then I think real life just, just inspires me as well. Um, cause as, as creators, we have to kind of take inspiration from everywhere. So, um, and, and, you know, just, just being out there in the world, t what we see on TV, what we hear on the radio, um, or, or, you know, what's on our playlist or a right. book we're reading or, or anything, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of people that are making a lot of work. Uh, and bringing it to life in new or imaginative ways. I forget his name now, but there's been someone I've seen out there. I think it's, I think it might be Carlos something or other, or it might be a Jose. It's a Spanish name. Um, who's bringing nursery, sorry, not nursery rhymes. He's bringing old kind of tales together, fairy tales to life. Yeah. I've seen yeah, but, but putting brilliant. like real new twist on them. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so just, just, I, 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 maybe that's the thing. It's kind of a new twist on an old thing, and 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 the mashups and the mix-ups, and and um, there's just a, there's a, inspiration is everywhere. Agreed, agreed. I, I love that. <laughs> yeah, this, it's, this it's, wherever you want, wherever you want to look for it, you'll find it. You know, I think that's the beauty of Mid Journey and AI in general is we're no longer limited to like I'm not going to sit down with just an ink pen and a, and a watercolor set, and this is all I can work with. I now mm. have the world at my disposal in a sense of looking at opportunities and I can exper experiment with paper craft today. I could do, uh, you know, aluminum built with carbon fiber and whatever else I could explore anything, um, and see generative ideas, uh, happen right in front of me. So I think this is what's so cool with the technology is playing in the space. And it's like an unlimited uh, sandbox of exploration. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, indeed. One last thing is in the book uh, you're being a part of our AI, AI Explore collaborations. I have you down covering the subject of render styles plus isolated subject plus typographic information and data. 
uh, with the lesson title of Astrographics and Space Exploration. Now, without reteaching mm. the lesson, what is the biggest takeaway that you hope people are going to have in regards to your lesson? Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, I, I I hope that... So, so where that came from was... Actually, which is something I should have mentioned right at the top in terms of like a practical work application for it, because we, we talked about it when we were yeah. um, discussing ideas for for the book, for what I might contribute, is that at work, we often have to do infographics. Um, and yeah, we, we're often not necessarily stuck for inspiration, but we often need a bit of inspiration for a particular infographic that we're going to do right and that 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 infographic space just like any other space in in you know our field is huge there's there's so many different styles that you can put on that so yeah um and and i suppose the other thing is that that mid journey obviously as we all know is not good at text (laughs) it is not (laughs) it won't render it so uh, what I would like people to do or to, sorry, to take away when they read that is then go through the lesson is to see that what, what mid journey is really good at, I think at this stage in its development and our, our development with it is, um, primarily as, as a source of inspiration and concepting, um, mood boarding, storyboarding. It basically is there for and with us kind of at the start and maybe towards the middle part of the creative process. And then we really kind of take over. So I think that that would be the main takeaway is that it's there for inspiration and to give you a broader base of ideas and possibilities than you would have had time, money to do with, sorry, to do in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. I I loved what you had been doing in that space. And that's kind of why I really wanted to push you in that direction. I'm glad you decided to to pick that up as your lesson direction, because I think it's a, a fascinating study and it's something that I haven't seen a lot of people do well, and yet you were doing it really well. So uh, I'm excited Thanks. about engaging and including <laughs> we'll that. spend a long time exploring it to, <laughs> to get where I want. I, I think, and, and that's the other thing is that, um, and, uh, just, I, I don't know, this might be a final point, but um, there are a lot of people out there now who think still, and that, that something can be achieved in minutes, you know, oh, we can just get a, a, right. a visual done in minutes in mid journey. Uh, and yeah, sometimes you can. And, and the, but the thing is that, that really to kind of get the finish and the craft that you see out there on, on people's feeds takes time, you know? Yes. So, so the, the, the graphics that are in the book, in the lesson I spent, I mean, I mean, on and off, I, I was, I was in and out of them for maybe a two or three week period, but, right. but I would say that the, as a total amount of time, probably spent maybe two working days noodling around with them, going in different directions, coming back, right. taking a left turn or a right turn and, you know, going back to my fork in the road to, to get the result I was after. And, and it does still take time. Right. But, um, but then again, it's a lot less time than it would have taken. Yeah. Two Agreed. years ago. That's why I often, every once in a while, will show the process of my failures to get to the results that I'm sharing on a daily basis. Right. Because yeah. it's easy to see, look, Brian produces this new thing every single day, but they don't see the three or four hours the night before trying to yeah. make that thing work. Um, you know, so this is the, this is kind of the fun piece with this is, yeah, it does speed up the process and you're getting results that are great you know with a little bit of effort that you're multiplying what you were able to do before you know i could have done one of those in you know a couple days time but i was able to do Mm. six of those in a couple days time so that's the brilliance of this this whole platform uh matt it's been fantastic talking with you i'm so excited thank you the same very much (laughs) it's i'm so pleased to have you as a friend now and to be able to engage you in our new book that's coming up and then just the future of where things are going to go i'm excited to see how you guys are going to continue in, in, let's see, interjecting AI technology uh, into Brave Bison and, and the projects you have in front of you. Uh, so keep us abreast of all those things as we're moving forward. But uh, again, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks very much for having me and, and, and inviting me into the, into the whole, yeah, 
the whole process and and yeah the the, the collaborations book it's been great really yeah so it. i know here i'm in north carolina my time is 2 p.m uh what time do you have over there in england uh 7 p.m so yeah okay so you're ready to wrap up for your evening sir and uh yeah, have yeah a i'm wonderful... off for a beer now yeah <laughs> <laughs> have a wonderful thing and thank you again i appreciate it matt Hey there, New York Times bestseller Joe Nassis here. I first encountered Brian Sykes via his LinkedIn posts and bought his two AI tutorial books. And with his help, I've been able to improve my AI game so much that I just contributed all of the covers to my new NFT book release from Book.io. Thanks, Brian. <laughs>